Hey, sports card fans, it's John, Wade Boggs fan. Hope you're all doing well. I want to start off by asking a question, and this is to those who collect Hall of Famers. And it doesn't matter whether they're whether you collect raw or graded, it doesn't matter to this particular question. But before I ask the question, I want to give a little background or context to the question that I have uh, for those of you out there. It's been, I think, a little less than two years now that I have started collecting baseball Hall of Famers. And when I first started off, I decided to try to get all the Hall of Famers of a particular set. So I first started off uh, focusing on 1978 tops, 79 tops, then I expanded it to 1980 and then down to 77. And each time I decided to expand was because I would always hit like a, a roadblock. It would be hard for me to find a particular card in a grade and a price um, that I was willing to pay for. And once it got past the 77 to 80, then I found myself just going after somewhat random cards. And I, I, I don't like too much randomness. I like to have some sort of focus. The main focus obviously is Hall of Famers. But beyond that, which Hall of Famers to go after? There's so many out there. Okay, there's thousands over the years. And so then I found myself saying, okay, well, maybe I'll try going for a player run. And I've been trying to complete a Horyastremski player run. I'm about maybe, I don't know, half a dozen cards away from completing a Karyostremski run. I haven't gotten there yet. Starting to hit a couple roadblocks with some of the cards from the 60s, trying to find ones in the condition and price that I'm comfortable with. Same thing with my sets. I have yet to complete a Hall of Fame run of a particular year. I'm close on the 1978 uh, tops run. I'm two cards short of having all the Hall of Fame cards of that year. I look at it as sort of like a crossword puzzle. You have words going up and down, you know, vertically, and then you have words going horizontally. And if you try to concentrate on the vertical words, it'll get you so far. And then you fill in the horizontal words and filling in a couple of the last blanks, you've completed the crossword puzzle. So over time, I realize that whether you focus on a particular set of Hall of Famers or various player runs, over time, you're going to fill everything in and have those set runs and player runs and so on. Um, but my question to you is, how do you approach collecting Hall of Famers? Do you try to go for... Um, do you focus on the year? So for me, like, you know, 1978 tops, do you focus on trying to get all the Hall of Famers of a particular year? Um, I know uh, TJ Mack Vintage Cards has a great collection of Hall of Famers in various years of tops. Um, I'm sure he could pull out from those sets maybe some complete player runs as well, but I think he focused mainly on trying to get all the Hall of Famers of a particular year. Then on the flip side, you have Ray from Philly, who primarily concentrates on doing player runs. He'll pick a player, get all the cards, uh, his playing day cards, and when it's complete, he'll pick another player and work on that player. Right now, he also happens to be working on a Kari Stremski run, uh, like myself, and I have a feeling he'll probably complete his run uh, before me, but that's that's fine. Um, so there's another approach on collecting Hall of Famers. And to, to use that analogy, again, of a crossword puzzle, you have someone like my baseball collector who has been collecting Hall of Famers for years. And because he's collected so many, he can do a player run video or he can do a complete set um, of a particular year. I think he recently did a, a video showing off 
uh, his completion now of all the Hall of Famers from 1960 tops. I think he just picked up a Gil Hodges um, to complete that. So again, over time, I realized that all of these, either player or set, they're going to fall into place for me. But I'm still at the early stages of this. So would love your feedback on how you approach collecting Hall of Famers. Is it do you try to go for a particular year or do you do a player run? And what happens when you hit a, a snag where you just can't find that one or two cards to complete the run? Do you move on to another year or another player and then hope to eventually get those last couple fill-ins? Uh, would love to know your um, thoughts on this or your approach in the comments of this video. So uh, with that, I have a one card mail day to show off. It's a 1980 Topps Hall of Famer that I picked up. And it's one where I don't have a lot of cards of that player. I have a small little run, um, but nothing close to anywhere near a complete player run. Uh, but it's a card that I've been looking to get for quite some time. Could not find one in the condition and more importantly, the price that I felt comfortable in paying. It's not a big card. Um, and, and to me, sometimes, you know, five or 10 bucks is, is, is a big deal that I just don't feel like paying a particular price for a card, uh, whether it be a buy it now or I've, I've lost off. I've lost on many an auction to try to pick up this card. So I'm happy to add this to my collection. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show off my one card to add to my 1980 tops group of Hall of Famers. Okay, I gave a little hint in the thumbnail of this video as to what the 1980 Hall of Fame card that I picked up is. Uh, and if you're familiar with 1980 tops, you probably figured it out. But if you haven't, the card in question is the 1980 tops Johnny Bench. Uh, PSA 8, uh, I've been for 78, 79, and 80. Uh, tops cards I've been trying to get for 78 and 79, uh, trying to get at least eights uh, as well as 1980. I feel for 1980, a PSA 8 um, is not outrageous for a card except for the Henderson rookie, but I do have that one in, in an eight. Uh, so the vast majority of my 1980 cards are in a PSA 8. I have a couple PSA 9s, uh, but I think that's a reasonable condition for me to go after for 1980s cards. Now, as I've been going back into the 70s and 60s, I'm being a lot more liberal uh, than I had originally set out to be in terms of what I'm willing to accept for a condition because of budgetary purposes and what some of these cards are going for. This particular card in an 8 has been consistently going for um, selling for 30 35 bucks, usually around the 35 buck range. Um, I've seen buy it nows for way above that, um, or auctions that start off at like 30, 35 bucks. And, um, I just, I don't know. It's one of those things where I look at other sold prices and I have a set price in mind that I'm willing to pay for a card. I know it may, it may hurt me because I may not be, I may, I may be a little bit too stubborn <laughs> to, to pay a particular price, but uh, that just means I have to be patient. And at the end, if I'm able to buy a card for the price that I'm comfortable with, it's a little bit more satisfying for me. So this was an auction. Um, so I, I put in, again, a fairly reasonable, I forget what the maximum bid is, but the price I won it plus tax and shipping all in, I'm in for 25 bucks. So again, even that five or ten dollar victory um, is, you know, is a lot for me. So it just means I have five or ten dollars I can spend on another card. Uh, sometimes it just uh, comes down to that. But a nice example here. Uh, again, not all eights are created equal. I've seen some eights that are off center, diamond centering. It just don't appeal to me. This one is pretty straight on. Uh, really nice example of the eight. Uh, the back is uh, pretty clean and fairly centered as well. Very happy with this pickup. Um, it appears to be a newer slab as well. Um, but yeah, um, so 
that's my one card pickup, a long time uh, coming. So I, I mentioned that I don't have too many cards of this particular player, in this case, Johnny Bench. Um, I have his uh, 70, now I have his 76 through 1980. Um, once you get to the 75s, again, they're, they're pretty expensive. Uh, and then you keep going back. I used to a long time ago, used to have his rookie card, but that was one of those cards that I regret selling. Uh, and I've yet to pick it up. So, of course, that would be the big one. And, of course, his uh, 69, uh, his second year card as well. So, yeah, there you have it. Again, I would love to know what your approach is to collecting vintage Hall of Famers. Do you try to do um, a particular year, like 1980 tops, Or do you try to go after... A particular player run and then move on to another player say Johnny Bench and then move on to someone else or are you pretty random just you find a card of a Hall of Famer that suits your condition and price and you go after it and add it to your collection so various ways to go about it but love to know how you go about it that's all I have for you as always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time